I don't know if anyone knows because I never ever tell anyone or talk about it. Did you go to town uh, again? No, no. <laughs> I wanted to comment. Um, I uh, I do a little little review just for the crew, just in the group chat of the uh, videos in the uh, the TWAB each week. I usually try and keep them one to three words or so. And I have to say, I had nothing but nice things to say about the movie <laughs> of the week this week. There's that like the titan first they're time. trying to kill I know. the guy. <laughs> I was like, Burns is about to reveal his uh, dark secret here that he hates all of your content. <laughs> I, uh, you, you know, I, it's not for me, right? They're, they're, they got different metrics than what I like. But I got to say, that one was very funny and what Blink is all about. Um, and, uh, the reason I thought to say that is because we've got a big old twab to talk about this week and I've got it pulled up in front of me. So, uh, let's get to it, huh? Welcome to Crucible Radio, the podcast about all things Destiny 2 PVP. Uh, we are two weeks away from the Forge, the season of the Forge, whatever that means. I, yeah, I, uh, it's, it's like, you ever have those days where it's like Sunday night or something and you're like, oh, I got to go to bed at some point and then... Somebody like the last thing catches you and is like, what, what are you talking about? And you're like, I got work tomorrow. They're like, nah, tomorrow, tomorrow's a holiday. And you go, oh man, I totally, I had no idea. It, it snuck up on me. I'm <laughs> glad you told me. I feel like that's what this next expansion has been like. It's like, yeah, yeah. You're just like spending so much time like chasing other things in the game. You're like, oh man, I've just been like really trying to get some exotics. And they're like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's here. And there's going to be more exotics to chase. Yeah. (laughs) I don't even have them all. Yeah, birds, it's like showing up to work on a day where no one's at the office, except you show up to Destiny and you think you're going to get Luna's Howl and it's gone forever. (laughs) Sure is dark in here. Uh, well, okay, let's, we, we, we got some stuff to talk about in this TWAB and we got some new, uh, I don't know, call them patch notes or what, but, um, before we get to that, um, we've been playing some Destiny. What have you guys been up to? My... My Titan grind continues. I finally mm-hmm. got a good reward. Swain was there for it. We did a little, uh, what's it called? Shattered, the, Throne. Uh, Shattered Throne. I was also like being kind of annoying when I was asked to play. And I was like, oh, it's so long. But uh, <laughs> I was like, fine. And then I got One-Eyed Mask. Hey, hey we did it. Hey, Titan grind over. Yeah. Um, <laughs> love you, Antaeus Wards. But no, not what I was looking for. Thanks. Uh, it's it's been fun to get used to it. I have to admit, I thought I'd switch, be a god. I'm so good. I'll never stop using anything else. But my first few games with it, I was like, oh, I'm not figuring this out. And I definitely have been leaning heavy into the Syntheseps. So I still miss a lot of melees now, where I just sort of swing at them yeah, instead of it's lunge. It's tough one to untrain yourself. Yeah, uh, it's pretty bad. But I have gotten gotten the hang of it in the last uh, last two nights practicing with it and finally playing some comp again. And uh, it's obviously very strong. I can feel the situations where it saves me. The funny thing is, though, is that it kind of uh, opened my eyes to a perk I didn't think I would like. Because I look at it and I'm like, okay, great. I got the exotic. doesn't matter. Uh, but I had an enhanced heavy lifting perk on it. Heavy lifting is more super energy from power weapon kills or heavy weapon kills. Enhanced is just a better version of that. And I was like, fine. Uh, but what happened is Thunderlord came out the same day I got this exotic <laughs> and I rolled into quick play. And then later in comp, we'll talk about it with Tash later, but Thunderlord is a monster. And I was getting my super up in one round of survival just with a few, you know, three or four <laughs> Thunderlord kills and then assisting my teammates. It was absurd. And I have no power mods or, or super mods on my Titan at the moment. I've used them all up. I cannot imagine what this would be like with, with super mods. So everyone don't sleep on this perk. It's very good. And Thunderlord is amazing. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's been fun to switch up my Titan build while still feeling like I'm like, I'm like, I'm good with it. You know, that's, it is my main at the moment. feels good. I have that same perk on one of my armor pieces too, Bones. And uh, I think it's, I don't, I don't want to, know if it's specific to the new year's or, i don't i use it in gambit and it goes very well in gambit mm-hmm. yeah i mean it's great for a lot of scenarios because you have a lot more enemies to hit in pve or, or and opportunities to use your power i think you know we've been talking about the last few weeks like we're finally at this point where we can just grind for that perfect piece of armor rather than using whatever's maximum light and it feels 
it's really fun to to get these awesome builds. Like I just masterworked some armor for the first time so far in Forsaken, and it feels really cool to have that awesome set that I like. Yeah, my armor is fully masterworked now, and it feels feels right. I missed it having <laughs> yeah. like a gold border around everything. It looks it's so small. fancy. It looks looks clean. It does look clean. I will say mine remains a work in progress. <laughs> I just, uh, you know, I, I, I gotta, I gotta figure out, I gotta figure out what my loadout is. You know, I feel like I keep changing it up and it's like, I got a pair of, uh, gauntlets with, uh, gr- uh, grenade loader and, uh, grenade scavenger on them. It's like, come on, baby. That's great. I'm, I'm loving this fighting line. I always got my play of the game on me. Let's, it's perfect. Let's do that. And then, you know, change it up to a shotgun, a black town. It's like, oh, maybe I should. I should do, I should, I should use this instead. You know what I think I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to make a uh, spreadsheet and mm. I'm going to look at all the different loadouts I look and say, all right, if I had to masterwork one set of armor that's going to give me the best bang for my buck across all these. So like going for those, you know, projectile targeting or um, oversized weapon loader, all those kind of things that, uh, you know, the big groups that give you the max benefit. Uh, I'll end up somewhere around there and try and put put together some reasonable compromise. You know, this is spreadsheet paralysis. That's what we call it. Birds, you brought this on yourself. <laughs> Birds, just go into the raid and use the uh, the wish and just jump to the to the chests. Get some of the you uh you, you lost me at going to the raid. No, no, I <laughs> you don't have to I, uh, do much. You just like shoot the thing and then no, you no, no. Jump I, ahead. I did. I did. I did the grind. I did the grind uh, once, and then I thought to myself, you know, this is not a good use of my time. It's not. It's, it's not fun. You know, whatever. Like, well, what, well, whatever. What do I care? You know. Uh, but no, I, I, I did it. I, uh, I got the checkpoint. I did the thing where you take your Titan back over the, uh, back over the bridge with your Sunbreaker and what have you. And it was, uh, it's fine. But it's just, you know, it's, uh, it's not what my goals are right now. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm on that Luna grind. I can't be distracted running around in the in the raid by myself. Preposterous. <laughs> this guy. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't know. That sounds something like. That sounds exactly like what you would do. <laughs> <laughs> Is go go do an activity by yourself. <laughs> well, I, I would say the only thing more likely than me doing an activity by myself is me not doing an activity. So I'd like to <laughs> no think activities. I'm staying on brand <laughs> No, I mean, you know, it, it's fun to laugh and all, but I think that is important, right? Like we talked about it, you know, incessantly. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, play the game you want to play, right? There's a lot of different games available in here. And my version right now requires only ever playing the comp playlist. And that's what I've been doing. Although I finally... I finally gave it a rest with the solo queue. I still, honestly, I think there's still situations where if you're solo queuing in, uh, you, up until you, I don't, I don't know what it is. Like you can still do okay. The odds of you getting put with a three stack, who's probably not the worst, is decent. Or going to an all solo queue lobby, um, it's not crazy, but it sure is nice when you've got got some teammates who know what they're doing. Start to get in that groove. Close, man. What have you been up to, Swain? Uh, I played my hunter this week. And weird. It's been nice. It's been real <laughs> weird to like switch back and forth between jumps. But uh in a, a quest to kind of just get more chances at exotics, <laughs> I was playing on my hunter and knocking out the comp like uh the five games of crucible to play each week in comp and doing all right i kind of like there was a moment when i switched back to my titan and went into comp last night that i missed having the trip mine it was just real Hmm. weird like i went to go throw a grenade and i was like oh wait this doesn't zone as nicely yeah like (laughs) um i think i'll definitely finish off those grind that grind for both of them just kind of uh, get to rank, fi- well, get to level 50 and just do my thing up to that point. Uh, and once I hit level 50, that's when I'll go back, maybe do all the story, get the other subclasses. I'm in no rush, but the the funny thing, though, is like 
thinking back to previous like grinds with alternates, it was always just like, man, I don't want to do my alt. I'll have to go and use blue weapons and all that. Um, but something I discovered this time, which is amazing, is that you can just pull it out of your collections and it'll match whatever light level you're at and you'll be able to use it. So I ended up pulling out like all of my favorite weapons. So like pulled out an ace of spades, pulled out a queen's breakers, pulled out like, uh, you know, all of the exotics I wanted and all of the, uh, legendaries from year one that I, I like a play of the game and Aaron tell. And it's like, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm set to go. Like before you'd be like, okay, let me look through my vault. What is like a level 37 I can use that I didn't delete? It's just, it, it's, it's so great. It's like, that's one of those quality of life things that I don't think gets enough credit now that we're like so far into Forsaken. It's great. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love, yeah, just having the freedom to delete stuff. Just like, I need a couple more weapon parts. Delete everything. Get rid of it. Pull everything out. Get. Did I mention last week I got Queen Breakers? On the show? I don't know. I play that a lot. It's amazing. It's the best gun. <laughs> I can't stop talking about it. I'm sorry. And right before this, I got an Aaron Till with tap to trigger and under pressure. It's literally the role I've been wanting. That's that's beautiful, man. And you like if you it. know the gunsmith, it's impossible to get a gun <laughs> you want from the gunsmith. I haven't seen that in years. <laughs> yeah. So feeling good. Feeling good. What about you, Bro- Bones? Dude, I forget <laughs> what circle we already, went. We already here. went around the circle. Let's get to the yeah. twab. We got what uh, else? You got minimal... Bones? What are you up to? How, how what what else? I don't know. I'm trying to play comp, and it's I got a long ways to go. No, but like I don't like know. what in in, in life? In how life, was your, I don't how was know. Work this week. The work was awful. We had <laughs> we had key people out of the office. Which causes mass panic, which it shouldn't, but it does. Mass panic, and you know, Google Gmail forced the changeover to their new UI, their new overlay with all the bubbles instead of the clean boxes, and it's all bold now. And there's little extra things, and and, and chaos. The office is <laughs> in chaos because they're just picturing the community uh, GIF where he comes in with the pizza. Literally that, literally because Gmail <laughs> changed their overlay. And yes, it functions entirely identical, but who knows? Maybe that overlay is why we didn't get this one email. Okay, maybe that's why. Maybe Gmail did this. Uh, yes, maybe that's, that's why something's Gmail going works. wrong. So yeah, that's my life. That's my life. Can we talk about the TWAB? The yes, TWAB? let's do it. The This Week at Bungie. Uh, they, we, were, we were talking right before we started that we had uh, a year of Forsaken hype what felt like it. And then we haven't heard much, but finally got a nice cool little image of the next season coming up. It starts November 27th. That's your last time, folks. You got to get it the 26th. You got to get your pinnacle stuff or grind again next season. But uh, yeah, here it comes. Season of the Forge. Yeah, there's a lot of details in this twop about like, I don't know, kind of putting a nice bow on the end of the season to kind of get everybody answer all the questions that are coming A nice out. wish ender on the end of the season. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh God, that was terrible. <laughs> I have to say, I mean, like thinking back on previous competitive seasons, this one felt like it had the most momentum to it. Like a lot of them felt like by the halfway point, it's just like, all right, if you like, if you like this, you keep playing it. If not, No, you mean if you hate not. yourself, keep playing well, it. Yeah, <laughs> different, different people have different motivations, but um <laughs> Yeah, this one felt like it's um they really managed to drop some milestones or some, you know, some time gated things or whatever over the course of the season that it felt like uh it never really ran out of steam. There's a there's a little like the mis- mystery behind this upcoming season is nice. Like there's an ex- there's part of it that where you're like, "Oh, I do enjoy seeing it all." Like how we kind of got a an idea of what the crucible pinnacle weapon was going to be for forsaken. Everybody was like, Oh cool. Like a hand cannon that does this. And everybody was like, I, I feel like, yeah, we videos. saw that. And then like within 10 minutes, I had found a spreadsheet somewhere of like time to kill for how this hand cannon must work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and this time around, like we're getting not just for crucible, we're going to get a pinnacle weapon for gambit as well, which is 
absolutely thrilling. I can't wait to get that, that is first. Cool. But it's nice that they're just like putting these things in and we don't know about it. Like I'm in my head, I'm like, oh, what is these pinnacle weapons? Like we got a pulse rifle the first time and we got a hand cannon this time. So like, what's the, you know, is it going to be a scout sword? That, that would be weird, right? It's just a sword. It's just a sword. Yeah. Just a sword? <laughs> I want the gambit one to be a linear fusion and that would be perfect. Mwah. Interesting. I'm guessing the the season of the blank from that little image, that's going to be with the one sword because that robot got a sword. <laughs> is that a robot? That, what, yeah, what's that robot up to? What was he yeah, doing? Yeah, why's he got one of those Sauron eyes? What? And then that, that first one, too. What, what, what's yeah, some what's, other robot? What's that, what's that robot what's up to? forge deal. What's yeah. going on? What? You got to check in, robots. Hey, you, you, what's, you, what's up with the drifter? Why is this card on fire? Why is this little green token up in flames? What's going on? Yeah. What, what are you doing? That looks like... The picture of the drifter here is like a very nicely painted picture of him. <laughs> like the one. Yeah, in the drifter game. in the game looks like the front camera on your phone. You turn, <laughs> turn it on accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way to put it. You did it. All you right, all right. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. No, <laughs> maybe not. All right. Um, uh, well, speaking of. Did we talk about these gambit changes? No, these are these are new. There was a Twitch stream this week there. They kind of uh, walked you through and yeah, and they kind of went over some things. But there's been some changes that's going to happen to Gambit when it comes to this new season. Um, they're going to uh, double the infamy rank bonuses that you get from bounties. They're going to have some tuning. There's going to be a new bounty. There's going to be some changes to other bounties that take forever. There's one in particular that requires like 50 like uh, blockers to be dropped. And it's just the most <laughs> yeah. annoying. And you get like 50 points from it. And it's like this, the time to like reward value here is just not great. So hopefully that one's getting changed. I, in general, like I, I hate the feeling of having a bounty mostly done and then it expires. Yeah. But I feel like I've let so many of those Gambit ones expire because it's like, wait, I'm how far? No, no, you can have it back. <laughs> I don't Do I need, get partial credit or something? I don't need the 15 infamy points from this. I will delete it. No, thank you. Um, they're also going to change up how subdivision rank ups work. Uh, you're going to no longer get blues. You're going to get the gambit legendaries and the weapons and the armor and all the great stuff Good. that comes along with it. Um, and just a few other things they're going to do. Uh, they're, they're tweaking the catch up mechanic. So if you're not familiar with the catch up mechanic, um, if you have your primeval spawned and you have like, say a seven stack uh, right now, if the other team spawns their primeval after you and you have that seven, they immediately have a four and that ends up being really crazy. And it tends to lend itself towards like these really crappy, uh, crappy feeling comebacks by the other team where they, you don't feel like they deserved it. Um, and I've definitely had a few of those when it came to the meatball. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're killing it and it's so stressful and you're like, oh, I just want to kill it and get the thing. And then the other team comes back and just like absolutely wrecks it. And it's disappointing. So nice to see these small changes, at least for me. Um, they feel like good quality of life in the game. Um, I really want to see how the pinnacle weapon fits into it all. Like, is it going to be rank resets? Because... Infamy, you don't lose points. You just kind of keep gaining it, depending. Um, I feel like a lot of the rewards were tied to resets this past one, so I probably see it. I don't know. It'll probably like it, it will be a bounty for sure. That's the way, the way they've been going with it. So give me it. I want it. I got a meatball. My first one. Hey, congrats! Now, now I got to do that freaking. No, I got a stupid strike and I didn't want to do it yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's cool. It's a cool strike. I'll say that much. Yeah. I'm is it different? It is different. Oh, okay, cool. All right. Uh, all right, then I'm 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 down. Eventually I'll there get you it. Go. We got both <laughs> back. Hey. I'm easy to convince. 
it, the gun is great in the the raid. So if that makes it feel any better, I think this is a great raid weapon. Totally off topic, but you know, I raid consistently this season and I think it's cool that that gun is good in that raid that you don't need a uh, whisper of the worm for everything, even though maybe it's a little reliant on the, uh, what's it called? The shoddy. But I, I did a raid a, a couple weeks ago where I only used a sidearm in my kinetic at a smuggler's word with rampage. And it was just beautiful. And I just, so I, I love that that raid lets you use everything. And uh, I hope malfeasance becomes like this cool everything gun, but I'm, I'm going to get it. Cause I like that. I don't think it'll ever really be all that great in PvP. Um, I'm okay with that though, because yeah. it does it shines well in other areas. It's really good for obviously Gambit, um, and it's really good in specific PvE situations. And I kind of really love a gun that just like forces you to think when it's the best, like when it's like really good to use. Isn't it um, funny that we don't like just universally hate the Taken right now? <laughs> it is. It does feel <laughs> weird. Like they're they are heavily featured in this expansion, and no one's like too mad about it. No, I guess. it's mostly oh, no. because the scorn have like the the screams, and the screams are so annoying. <laughs> yeah, it's screams just eclipsed everything so far. <laughs> screams hey, soak yeah. up all the hate. <laughs> hey, you guys are all right. You're not so bad. <laughs> I don't know if we talked about it last week in the TWAB. We did get an update uh, for the changes that they're making for uh, spectral blades. Did we talk about this? Listeners, leave a comment in the uh, comment section if we Did we about properly this discuss an upcoming change? Yes or no? Thanks for your feedback. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and assume that we didn't because I don't think we did. And I'm pretty sure I was here last week. Um, <laughs> was I? I don't remember. remember last week. What happened? Uh, they all kind of blur together after a while. We're 4,000 <laughs> episodes into this podcast. <laughs> No, these are worth mentioning. Um, just go ahead and point them out. In case you lived under a rock and you missed them, uh, they're tweaking that spectral blades. It's uh, it's certainly fun. It's, uh, you know, if, if that super is up and you're in a bad spot and you don't have a super, it can be real scary when it's coming at you. But it sounds like they're really trying to change the tempo of this super. Um, you're going to get a longer lunge on all your attacks. The melee attacks are cheaper. And uh, it's increasing the number of consecutive hits required to speed up attack rate, uh, but decreasing the base attack speed, which apparently makes hit registration better. So it sounds like their intention is to have you making more attacks when it counts and expect them to connect versus kind of a flurry of spamming them when you're close and not getting the uh, reaction that you want. I think it's probably safe to say that we have no fucking idea what this is going to play like, but uh, I imagine sandbox designer Claude Jerome does. So I uh, hope it's good. And Melee. Chop, chop. <laughs> Glad I did that. Thanks, birds. <laughs> I don't know. You just Let's need talk to get Michael it out. Tash. How about that? Chop, chop. Chop, chop. Bow, yaka, yaka, yaka. <laughs> this seems like uh, Arrested Development when they try to talk to the chicken. <laughs> us, us making super sounds is the equivalent of the Arrested <laughs> Development chicken impressions. <laughs> <laughs> you, ever, chop, you, guys chop, chop, before? Uh, you guys remember Bla- uh, Blade Dancer from D1, right? <laughs> 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 and, and the original Sunbreaker. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <sighs> Ooh, uh, if I could, if I could do the noise where you put your finger in your mouth and you like flick your cheek or something like that, I wait. would, but I can't. So that's my that's my Nova bomb. <laughs> Bop. 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 <laughs> hey, hey Elsewhere can do it. There we go. That's oh, the Nova bomb, guys. <laughs> Episode four thousand in the book. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Here's Nova warp. <laughs> Oh, actually, man, actually, Nova Warp, Nova Warp is the the baseline from Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> God. It's it's so good. Uh, 
<laughs> well, I'm hoping that y'all having fun with this because uh, it's amusing. But we, we are. need to get super serious for a second and give a shout out to our sponsor this week. The one, the only, Casper. It's a sleep brand that makes expertly designed products to help you get the best rest one night at a time. Oh, Casper. Yes, Swain, I wanted to ask. Uh, you got a Casper mattress. I do. Uh, would you say that it cradles your natural geometry? Oh, I got some natural geometry on me, <laughs> and it's cradled. <laughs> Swain's carved out a nice badonk uh, <laughs> a divot in his Casper. Uh, it's, it's cradling them all the right places. Um, it's got that, that sleep service, just the right amount of sink and bounce. And, uh, you know, the breathable design, it's nice. You know, I, I just, I sleep easy on it. Bones, are you going to, you going to get one of these Casper mattresses? I want one, man. I'm in the market. I always feel like anytime Casper mattresses come out, um, Swain and I both like kind of feel bad for you a little bit. You know, <laughs> sleeping on a Casper mattress. I never invite me over to try I'm it little, out. <laughs> I'm a little obnoxious whenever someone mentions um, they're looking for a mattress because <laughs> Swain crashes into the room. <laughs> I'm like, <"Hey!" laughs> and it's like real, like in real life, friends. And I'll be like, so on our podcast. It's a po- it, don't don't worry about what kind of podcast or why I'm doing a podcast. But we because it's ads. weird. I just have one question for you. How would you say your natural geometry is being cradled, <laughs> and is it in all the right places? Here, let me paint you a word picture about how I'm being cradled. It's and they crazy. say, Swain, stop! I'm already <laughs> sold. Anywho, Bones, uh, you wanna you wanna come over and take a nap in my bed? <laughs> yes. Finally, you ask. <laughs> I mean, you can get on a plane and nap in my bed if you want, but and you might as well I, just buy a mattress at that No, <laughs> his nap is mine. <laughs> Look, folks, this is pretty simple. You can be sure of your purchase of Casper's 100-night risk-free sleep on it trial. Just, just, just give it a shot, man. I guarantee you're going to be sleeping better <laughs> than whatever pile of sticks you're currently sleeping on. <laughs> Oh, that's a how, fun did, one. how did this ad turn into a personal <laughs> attack? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, now is the perfect time to try Casper yourself or to gift Casper to some yo, if I had a if I had a mediocre mattress and someone gave me a mattress for the holidays, I would um I would really question the nature of my relationship with that person because that would be an incredible gift to receive. Like, you better show up for that one. So, hey, if you're looking for that Black Friday or Cyber Monday deal to seal it in, you got to head to casper.com slash savings to save 10% on your entire order with any Casper mattress for a limited time only. Offer expires on November 27th. So uh, this Thanksgiving, you're going to want to sleep it off like we all are. Uh, go check it out. It's uh, casper.com slash savings. Terms and conditions apply. Watch out for that trip to fan. It'll get you. It's going to get you. All right. I uh, <laughs> I think we're about done here. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, uh, uh, let's blade dance on over to our interview with the one and only M. Tash. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think play dancing. I think just licking up a big bowl of milk. <laughs> I think uh, Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> oh, Andrew, hit us with that. Like a play dancer with a nice Chianti. <laughs> Once again, we've got some new music from the one, the only Odd Folks. Now, I know you knew you could go check them out and listen to their music at oddfolks.bandcamp.com. But did you know you can follow them on Instagram at instagram.com slash oddfolkstx? Or did you know you could uh, follow their page on facebook.com slash oddfolks? I sure did, and now you do too. So please go give them all the love, and when they're in your town, go see them. Trust me, I don't want to miss it. Uh, and of course, if you're a musician, well, we're going to keep on playing Odd Folks for a bit, but 
We are going to play some new stuff real soon here, and we'd love it to be you. So whatever you're working on, send it on over, crucibleradio at gmail.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the show. Uh, we have a very special guest joining us today. Uh, it's been it's been a minute, but we have uh, we've talked to this fellow a couple old times, and I believe there's a good chance you were our. That is right. You were our second guest second. in the history of this show. Really? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I love right. That. <laughs> Those were the days back when we were all little babies. That's cute. Little That's baby really cool. podcasters and content <laughs> creators. It's the one and only M Tash. Welcome back. Hey, thanks for having me. Does it still have the same smell here from the second episode? The studio? It's, it's a little bit better. It it might be the the snowball mics or something like just upgraded yeah. quality everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, we uh we open the windows before guests come over just to air it out a little bit. God. <laughs> <laughs> really running Dis- with this visual. Yeah, disgusting visual. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. <laughs> oh man. Well, it's been a minute. I mean, we uh we talked to you last in episode 107, which was uh several episodes ago. <laughs> um, and this was yeah, <laughs> this was in the lead up to Destiny 2. And here we are on the other side. And uh, yeah, we've been at it for a while. I guess we're uh, we're a year into this now too. So um, yeah, I, I guess let's just dive right in. What are you up to right now, right this minute? What are you working on? In game or just in life? Uh, in life. In life. Yeah, let's do in life. I like that. Well, I, actually, I was literally the reason I was a little bit late was I was at dinner with uh, community managers for Anthem. <laughs> so nice. some things in the in the mix in the future with anthem uh just kind of planning for the future but do we have an anthem jar yet like <laughs> where you put a dollar in the anthem jar Anytime whenever someone mention? says it we'll we'll we'll, we'll start it in 2019 <laughs> for sure yeah um, 2019 but i mean with with the expansion coming out on the fourth the season ending right away i'm gonna be very very busy uh coming up here i've i've definitely adjusted my content uh in the past year or two so you know before i i did guides like PVP guides and stuff. And now I try to cover, uh, you know, the hot new exotics, if there's a cool build or a cool weapon, things like that. And so it, uh, it's a little bit more, um, generalized information and, uh, you got, you got to be on top of it. Like I got to grind like 18 hour days at the very start, just to make sure I have the exotics first and things like that, Oof. or, yeah. you know, borrowing people's accounts and reviewing it there because we all know with Forsaken. I was going to say, it's not really working. Right? No, right one, no one had exotics. On so. <laughs> it was like one guy in the world yeah, from Furiosa, and it's like, jeez. But uh, other than so, that, uh, it's, just, it's just content. I, honestly, if I'm honest with you, my channel is the most consistent it's ever been ever right now, and it feels really good. Like last year was like, should I quit? Should I not quit? Destiny sucks. You know, like there's <laughs> before that there was all the demonetization stuff. Like it was risky business. And now I feel mm-hmm. like, holy shit, I think I can do this for the next couple of years with no risk, like zero risk. So it's good. Ah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and you know, I think in terms of our interactions, we took a couple detours. I mean, when we first started playing with your, when we first, uh, first talked to you, I mean, you were a playbook poster, you were making YouTube guides, um, and then for a period, I think we probably knew you most as a commentator. And, um, I got to say, that's really been a thrill to see you, uh, see you settle in, get comfortable there. And, uh, yeah, you know, put on the nice suit, sit in front of a camera and talk players through what's going on at high level play. Right. Thank it's you. Pretty cool, man. Yeah, it's, it's fun. It's crazy though. Even with some of the honestly amazing opportunities that I've had, you know, like with Bungie and things like that, still so difficult to book gigs. Like I have an agent now and still it's like, it's really hard to get your foot in the door. So I can't really do it consistently. Keep jamming it in the door. Yep. And just, and just hoping that one day that toe slips through and they're like, wait a second, let's hire this guy. (laughs) But it's fun. Well, we all got to be players right now. So, uh, so in game, what do you, uh, what are you playing? What are you working on? So, um, I don't play much. Uh, I, I really, 
really only get on to play uh, and make videos for the most part. But seeing how good Not Forgotten is, uh, I kind of have committed in this last week to the grind. So I went from zero. Well, no, I think I had 300 points um, and I'm at about 3000 now. And I got all the quest line done for Luna. So I got Luna's Howl literally last night at midnight or, or 1 a.m. almost. So uh, I've been playing around with that a little bit today, testing it out. And if if Not Forgotten is better than this one, then I like it's honest. In my it's opinion, be- it's done. It's dumb. Like <laughs> it, it was a lot of effort, but. I was getting angry before because I was like, oh, I can never beat Luna's Hell. And now that I have Luna's Hell, I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> now I now I see why. So it's definitely <laughs> yeah. changed my uh, my PvP. Um, honestly, my whole mentality lately. I was not having mm-hmm. fun last week. Uh, and this week, now that mm-hmm. I'm on the other side of it, it feels pretty good. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we're we're working our way up that comp grind right now. And I have to say, like... I typically don't like, uh, you know, I'm not a fan of a grind, right? Well, you got to make me do a bunch of stuff. Um, but I have to say, like, the Luna's Howl grind is pretty darn reasonable. I mean, it's, it's, it, there's some chores in there, but it's, it's not, it's not been too bad, right? It's stuff I would have been doing anyways, right? I'm still going to be playing Crucible anyways. I mean, how have you uh, enjoyed the, 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 the quest part of the grind? It's fine, but no, do you know what? I'm not going to say that. I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to retract that it's fine. I <laughs> honestly, I think there's something wrong. Uh, I don't know if it's with primaries or it's the way people play comp or if it's heavy or, or super mods. I had such a tough time just getting into gunfights. Like, like, mm-hmm. like the amount of times oh, yeah. someone would actually commit to just shooting me and fighting was almost nothing. I would catch someone off guard and they would sprint away back to their team or uh or or shade step away or whatever or using all these kind of small corridors people would just push with shotguns all the time and titan skating is a is a thing on pc and i just i couldn't believe how long it took me to get you know a hundred headshots i was like oh that's you know 10 <laughs> a game da, da, da. there was there were some games i got one or zero because i i, I couldn't even get yeah. a gunfight or the gunfight I would, I'd, I'd kill the guy with a, a last body shot as he shotgunned me in the face. And it was like, yikes. But at the same time. I feel like there was certain matches where it'd be like, I would, you know, we'd be playing control and it's like we're up by 50 or something. And it's like, okay, I'm basically going to throw for the rest of the match just so I can get these these headshot kills. Because if I'm actually trying to win this thing as fast as possible, I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm not going to get into long range shootouts. Right. Got my shotgun, you know. Yeah, it's like it's almost like you have to force yourself to not use heavy and like don't pop your super just so that they do happen, or else you snowball if you're playing with the team. Um, or if you you know try to do it solo, you're gonna just get pumped by the supers and the heavy and the shotguns, and and you're not gonna get in a fight anyways. At least not a one v one. You might kill someone as you get murdered, but I don't know. It just wasn't a great experience so far. And I see all these tweets that are like, finally got my Lunas. What a rewarding experience. And I'm like, shut the f- <laughs> what? You know, I'm glad that I have it, but I, it, it's, it wasn't that much fun. It was quite tedious. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, maybe it's a me issue though. You know, maybe, maybe I'm just a little burnt out on the game or whatever it is, but I just felt like I was, grinding and actually grinding to, to get those things done and play the games. And it didn't have that, that pizzazz is even doing mm-hmm. a quest line for uh, like the, the wish ender, the wish ender bow, you know, there's a couple different steps. You got to do some stuff. I enjoyed that. Even though I'm not the biggest PVE guy, it felt like every step I'm making good progress. I know what my goals are. I know what I'm going to do. This one was just kind of like, get your rank and these kills. Oh, and now solar kills and now rumble. And it just seemed so disconnected. To me. <laughs> yeah. I think there's oh. like, I'm, I'm hoping there's like some stuff to learn, especially going forward with a new season coming up soon, because I definitely agree where it felt, it felt weird how pigeonholed you got. And I can sort of understand hand cannon kills for a prestige pinnacle hand cannon. But there was like a week when I was doing it of, everyone went using all solar and it's like, great, there's four blade barrages because we all need solar kills. Right. And it sort of limits the, what could be a pretty exciting 
meta. And of course, we're all going to use what's best, but uh, it, it did feel like everyone was just going like, I guess I'll pull this out of the collections because I need solar kills when I'd rather just sort of play people using uh, what they like. So I think, you know, going forward, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we see some some improvements and changes because, you know, the pinnacle weapons make you do whatever it is regardless. Right. So might as well make it fun while we do. You know, anyone watching this, I would recommend if you're going to do this or sorry, if you're going to get the gun next time, start early. If you're, if you're starting near the end, like I am, the issue is, is, and then maybe it won't be as bad next time, but Luna is so much better than even Ace of Spades up close. Uh, or, 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 or any hand cannon, really, literally Luna's just destroys everything is when you're trying to do all those other quest steps, you're literally dueling a weapon that's better than you for most people, because now they're committed to getting not forgotten because it's near the end of the season. And it's like, you're, you're one step behind. And I honestly felt handicapped the whole time. There were so many duels where I literally couldn't kill the guy fast enough, even though I shot first because he had a better gun. And, um, you know, as I said, I don't know if that'll be an issue in the future, but I honestly think that I I made this much harder on myself than it needed to be. Just by waiting. <laughs> Every season waiting. I say that to myself. <laughs> I'm going to get started real early. And then something else shiny distracts me and I, I don't. <laughs> well, I heard there's a... So here, I, here I find myself. There's a the gambit weapon. Uh, apparently next next season there's supposed to be a gambit yeah, weapon coming or something. Up. And I mean, if they're that throwing will be another sexy early. weapon in... I'm going for it. Well, speaking of uh, making it hard on yourself, I know a lot of people have been solo queuing, and of course, the recommendation is to play with a team. But uh, do you have? Did you do you do anything different if you went into a game solo? I mean, this could be a general crucible topic, but how do you turn a game if you can't? You know, if if your teammates aren't in your in your headset, is there any strategy at all? Yeah. I, do you do you know what? Actually, in a couple of videos recently. Um, you might notice I like type in the chat and I don't turn on the mic or whatever, but type in the chat, tell them to group up. But the biggest thing I think you can do is be the guy that's helping to secure heavy. Even if you don't take it, mm -hmm. like if you know I've got really good aim, I can land my hand cannon shots, just help secure heavy so your weaker players can get it. And you will win so many more games with it because they're going to get kills with it. They're going to get supers. They're going to be, they're going to be more valuable. And if, you're on the other side of it and they're getting the heavy, it's you're you're just gonna get destroyed. Especially if they have kind of a coordinated team. I would say the only focus in that game should be controlling that heavy. Even points. Your teammates will straggle off, they'll get B, they'll get C eventually. But that heavy, I think, is kind of what's gonna make or break your game, which is also a little bit unfortunate that it's that reliant. But any games where I'm behind or I'm playing solo and I'm going for the win that's my main focus and it tends to work pretty darn good. Well, okay. Let's, let's talk about, let's talk about heavy. I mean, it's, it's certainly sitting in a spot right now. Um, and I think actually, you know, a good way to get started is we've got a brand new heavy weapon in the mix. I know you got your Thunderlord. Mm -hmm. Uh, do tell, what do you think? Well, see, I'm on PC now. I've heard a lot of complaints that the kick on it on console is like terrible. Like it's not as good. Huh. But on PC, like you can laser beam people with it. Like if you just tap in their general direction, you're going to get a headshot. <laughs> you're just, the thing I'm seeing is instead of taking a grenade launcher where you were getting like four kills that maybe three kills, four kills, you're getting Thunderlord and you're getting like seven to nine kills. And, and the issue with that is now it's lasting even longer. So you can secure that next one even easier. Cause before you know, if you got into that snowball and competitive where someone's grabbing heavy and they kind of hold things down, they usually have enough map control to get the next heavy. Well, now you just doubled the amount of map control they've got because they can kill that many more people with Thunderlords. So it's just, it's a, it's a little much to me. Yeah, I, I, I wonder, I mean, I suspect they're going to end up balancing this down at some point, pull the ammo back because like, all right, you know, you pick up heavy, you've got play of the game, you've got four shots, right? If you're using, uh, what's it called, uh, Black Talon, I mean, again, it's like four four shots, something like that. You're going to get, you know, you'll get your kills if you can if you can aim right. Um, but I mean, you can really stretch out one Thunderlord pickup for, uh, for a lot of kills. Yeah. Like, uh, at least I, until I, the next heavy pickup. Well, let, let me ask you this, yeah. Michael. I mean, if you were, if you picked up power, you've got your Thunderlord on you and you're really trying to make it count. How many kills do you think you could get out of, uh, out of one power ammo? 
I think seven is is probably the average. Like, and some people get more. And actually, just what you said there, I wanted to to build off that is. So let's say you have that grenade launcher and a guy has two HP, but you go blow a, a shot on him, right? You still used an entire grenade, but not with the Thunderlord. If a guy has half health, you put two mm. bullets into him and that you just converted that into another kill with it. So if you're lucky, if you're team shooting or something like that, you could get like 15 kills with it. Like it's it, it starts <laughs> getting crazy. So I would say probably seven um seven full kills on someone if you're not missing too many shots um you, you could do it as long as you're not dying because there is still kind of engagement time you can't just dive into the middle of them um as you could with something like a rocket launcher but uh seven kills that seems like a lot and that's and that's that's on the average side like i think i'm being i think i'm being pretty fair with seven yeah i mean like sometimes kills aren't even just you doing the damage especially in in destiny that you're getting someone else do a little bit and all you have to do is hit them with like one tap of right. thunderlord uh okay well thunderlord is is good we agree thunderlord <laughs> quite spicy um i'm Hot curious takes, to know, you heard it here first <laughs> <laughs> if you're not going to be using thunderlord uh as your exotic weapon are there any other exotic weapons that stand out for you i mean i hear that ace of spades is pretty good but uh aside from that i mean what else are you using uh, for exotics? Yes, please. Um, oh, God, I'm going to say it and get roasted. Telesto is <laughs> disgustingly good. <laughs> if, if, like, if used smart, it is oppressively good. For just zoning capabilities, um, you could literally spam a couple shots in a doorway, uh, you know, as in a choke point where they want to get to a control point, and they cannot enter that door unless they shoot it or they slow down or, you know, it just, it adds a lot of, of, um, I don't know, drama to the map that they have to now deal with this other factor or else they either risk dying or it's slowing them down. Uh, but also it's good for just killing. Same thing goes with uh, 1,000 voices. Not too many people have it, but being able to just kind of oh, trace when around you a corner. discovered it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the things you can do with that to zone people. Um, it's not just the kill potential. It's, it's being able to say, if you come down that hallway, you're dead. There's nothing you can do about it. And I think it's even more than some other uh, heavy weapons. Like a rocket, you might be able to blink past it, or a grenade launcher. Maybe you get some good hunter movement. There's some ways you can dodge it, but a thousand voices, you kind of just draw a dick on their face with the laser and then hope for the best. And so <laughs> those, I, I'd say those are the kind of the three right now that I'm seeing is Telesto, a thousand voices, and um, the other one, Thunderlord. That other one. We like so much. You made a good point, though. Um, <laughs> to counter this Telesto, I don't feel like I see a lot of people doing it. But please, shoot the little glowy things on the ground if they're going to blow up you or a teammate. It actually only takes like one or two shots and it'll sort of spread. But um, I, found, I found stuff just, you know, it's like sitting on the ground waiting to kill someone. And it's it's at least helpful to your teammates to get rid of it. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I think like, you know, especially with its power and and, and uh, reputation right now, it's like, you know, might as well do something to fight it as opposed to just complain. But please shoot those little things, everyone. Thanks. <laughs> and like, I don't know, I guess the tough thing is everyone's complaining about Telesto, but it's one of the only fusion rifles that's you know, really viable right now. And I don't mm -hmm. know, I just, this sandbox, I, I wish they were able to change things a little bit faster, a little bit sooner, just to spice it up. Cause you go two, three months with things being annoying. And then pe people, people, honestly, they hate something so much that maybe they needed a small tweak on Telesto, but now everyone's saying, kill it, you know, nerf it into the ground because they've spent so much time disliking it. And I just, mm -hmm. I get so lost on what true balance is. You need this game to be fun. You need the abilities and you need, you need special weapons, I think, or else, or else there's a lot of unhappy people. But even myself, I'm starting to feel like, God damn, if I die to another shotgun, I'm gonna I'm gonna get salty. You know? And I'm a I'm a okay, there's that like there's that threshold from like, okay, these are really hot right now to like, hey, if you're not using this, then you're making a mistake to like Oh man, starting to get a little tired of this to just like full on meme territory. If we just stay out of the meme territory where it's like you just say Telesto and people, you just see like 20 people, maybe several people are typing right now. <laughs> right. 
that that's the point you got to pull it back from. Yeah, so. and you know, I'm <laughs> I'm fine with like shotguns that can map you, but my issue is when someone titan skates towards me with that shotgun and I can't kill him in time, I get angry. And I've said this for Destiny One. I'll say for Destiny Two, I honestly think those primaries need just like a little tiny buff or something. I, or, or a slight reduction to the range on the shotgun or a slight movement re, uh, speed reduction. Like the amount of times where I see someone, I commit to shooting him, I land my shots and we both end up dying because he closed the gap and pulls the trigger is really frustrating to me because I'm more of like a halo guy. And so, you know, another guy in the community that really likes kind of the halo or slower methodical gameplay is cami kicks and people roast cami kicks. I feel so bad because they just, they they're like no destiny 2 suck dick there's there's no good parts about the first uh you know the first uh <laughs> iteration of destiny 2 right people get so angry they will they will rip him apart but then at the same time i'll see people complaining about these shotguns uh because they're just like a tad too strong or there's not enough ways to deal with them and it's like it's like we always go to an, one extreme or the other you know it's like you know snipers are too good and then shotguns are too good and it's like this. People don't like being happy, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, it tends to go the other way. Um, one thing that I I liked watching play out over your YouTube channel, uh, Mtesh, is watching the video for no more snipes. Why I never snipe anymore in <laughs> PvP, right? And then recently seeing your sniping comeback video. Um, how are you feeling about snipers currently in this? Like compared to like you know, how do they play into these like shotguns and telestos and like these really powerful power weapons? Right. So, um, there's people that can snipe. If you go, well, um, he posted a clip today with like a seventh column, uh, Drewski or, or yeah, Drews, Drewski. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. he posted a video. I've seen some videos from him. Extremely good sniper. Right. And, um, and you, you see true Vanguard. He'll try to snipe here and there. Um, there's guys that could do it on console. There's guys that could do it on PC, but I think every single one of them would admit I'm just doing it because it's f- it's fun to me. But it's not good. It is not a competitive advantage. There are almost no benefits right now to sniping. The flinch is crazy. The ammo economy uh, isn't the best. You honestly, because of how the maps are made, if you snipe, I think you actually give up map control because you can't get in and into some of those closer areas and you can't defend certain objectives. Uh, and it forces you to play really slow because in destiny one, like you could get pretty aggressive with your sniping. You could be in the middle of getting shot and you might be able to pull off that snow, uh, that snipe. But in this game, like if, if someone looks at you in a aggressive way, your, your <laughs> gun just like, it's like someone grabs the barrel of your gun and just starts shaking it while you're trying to shoot. <laughs> and uh, I, I mean, so did this like, did this make you like give it up entirely, like as like a jerk, knee jerk reaction at first, and then you kind of like yeah. weighed it back in, and, and still, but even still, like I do it as like a meme, like I'm gonna snipe today, and the entire time I'm like, oh god, this was a mistake, and and I know <laughs> that I'm rusty, like I I know that that comes into play too. People say it on my videos all the time. They're like, you're not that great anymore, and it's like, yeah, because I play an hour a day when I used to play eight hours a day, so that's gonna come into play. And I bet you a lot of people that complain about snipers, it's because, well, you haven't used it for months and months and months because they were so shitty. But I mean, I I used uh, silicon towards the end of the the first year. Right. A lot. And I got really good with it. And it was a matter of like just simply being in my hands all the time and using just that all the time. Yeah, exactly. It really got to the point where like, oh, this is good because I use it all the time, not simply because it's good in this sandbox. Right. Yeah. It's, it's just struggling right now. The snipers, um, the zoom is still like, to me, I really like the lower zoom scopes. Cause even in halo, um, you know, you could kind of do the, the first zoom in and then you could do the full zoom in kind of thing. And, um, it feels like it's just a little too much for a lot of these maps. There's there's a couple lanes that it works, but even the the shorter zoom in Destiny Two is like, it's like you're zoomed right into their forehead, like you can see their pores <laughs> through their mask uh, <laughs> with these sniper scopes. So I I definitely lost my love for sniping. I got really frustrated with it. I pretty much quit cold turkey, and until something changes, I just 
don't think I'll pick it up because I, I get frustrated with it. Well, fair enough. I, I have to say I was watching a bit of your sniping gameplay and there's a degree of um, muscle memory that, okay, maybe you're rusty, but it, it still seems quite solid. Um, in particular, you've got like that peak down to a science, just the, just picking your moment and being so ready to take that shot. And I, I mean, I think that applies to a lot of weapon types, right? If you're using a hand cannon, that's a great skill to have. Is there anything you could say about sort of practicing that kind of engagement versus just sort of walking out into the open and trying to line up a shot? I think the biggest thing would be, um, cause I get a lot of players that ask stuff like that actually, which is interesting. You, you brought that up. Um, and I find a lot of them use things like auto rifles. Auto rifles are really popular, even though they're not statistically good with kind of like that. I, I mean, lower skill gap or like lower skill players, I guess you could say, because they, you know, they're kind of point and shoot. You hold down the trigger. They're pretty, sure. pretty simple, forgiving, right? They're know. forgiving. Um, but what, what, what ends up happening is you almost get punished for doing those peaking battles, right? You want to be almost out in the open and dueling someone. And so a lot of people just never get the chance to practice it. But if they would switch to a scout rifle, a pulse, a hand cannon, and and be better equipped for those situations, I think they'd realize that popping in and out and doing those little peak shots doesn't take too long to master. It's, it's definitely a skill, you know, lining up that shot quickly and readjusting your aim each time. But I think with just switching to those weapons and seeing how effective they can be, um, you know, popping out, getting that quick shot and and getting back behind cover, the, the thing is, is like people don't feel comfortable maybe dueling with those weapons out in the open because they have to keep correcting their aim. But when you go back behind cover, you can kind of reset things and be like, OK, mm -hmm. I'm ready. My recall's good. Let's do another shot. And so I think it's a good way for people to get used to those weapons is just play really safe, kind of play back, use your walls and corners and cover and and just kind of play it safe. And you'll learn those weapons way quicker than you'd think. Yeah, there's definitely a, a certain rhythm that you lock into with it once you've uh, you sort of gotten in the groove there. Well, okay. Well, I want to talk about that. I don't know if this is like a question you could answer, Tash, but I feel like that has to be a halo instinct with like longer engagement times. And like, for example, I remember playing with a guy who I was like coaching a little bit and I watched some of his footage and he hit every headshot the first time in an engagement. Like his hand cannon was always a crit the first time he ran into someone, but he might lose the fight because the next shots were kind of wild or something like that. Right. And you're talking about, you know, peaking stuff like that, like using cover, but is there a way to practice? I, I don't know, staying cool halfway through a fight versus, you know, in the first two shots. Cause sometimes, sometimes the fights, you know, you miss one bullet and they get, they get to be like two seconds long. Is there any way to practice that? Like staying cool in that fight? Mm -hmm. Um. So I, I think it depends a little bit on PC and console. Uh, but one of the issues I've been having is my first shot is a headshot, but I hit him right on the top of the head, like right on the very tip top. And then with recoil, a lot of the times I, you know, go to snap for that next shot and I actually miss it. I, I go over <laughs> his head or slightly to the right. Um, if you want just like more consistent is just aim at neck level. There's a very good chance that hitbox you'll still hit the head. Um, and then you have a little bit more leeway. You got a little bit of aim assist, hopefully grabbing your controller um, if you're a complete amateur, complete amateur, I'd say like aim at the neck slash upper chest, hopefully a couple, you know, with your recoil drift up to his head. Um, but if you're going just for that, that quick shot out of cover, um, and you're doing the peak shots, it's okay to take that extra little second to, to line up that headshot. But in those duels, um, you know, a lot of it comes down to who's pulling the trigger the fastest. Like if you're not shooting at the, mm -hmm. the fastest fire rate possible, you're going to lose the duel, essentially. And so if you're missing shots while doing it, you're you're going to lose that duel as well because he's landing more shots than you are. So I think if you're looking for step, if you're kind of averages, if you're looking to do better overall, is just you got to land more shots than you're missing. And if that means taking an extra body shot here or there, you're still probably going to get more kills, but you're probably not going to get optimal time to kill on a lot of weapons. But if, if you're catching someone off guard... Who gives a shit? Aim at his chest for a little bit. You know, get those shots yeah. and guarantee that damage. So I guess sort of flipping gears, I mean, moving out of the, kind of that passive uh, passive mode of play or sort of, you know, more safe mode of play, um, there's also, you know, zooming around the map and putting a shotgun on people. I have to say, I was watching, your Titan movement is very, very smooth. 
I'm wondering, I mean, how much of that is just sort of making the the, the change over to mouse and keyboard? Um, or if there's there's some skills there that really, you know, kind of kind of help you get that move on as you're going around the map that you think apply across the board? I mean, if I'm honest, I'm I'm one of the scumbags that uses a macro on the on the uh, on the PC. I uh, I I get I get really tilted. Do I tried doing the scroll wheel for a while and I gave up on it. I think that um, you have a little bit of nice control you can do with the scroll wheel, but there is also something satisfying about just holding down a button and skating. Uh, I know it's scummy. Uh, that's one of the reasons why it's so smooth, though. Is 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 I'm pressing a button. It's it's not human input kind of thing. And so hopefully I don't get banned for that, but, uh, right. <laughs> Drag em, yikes. Um, so that, that definitely is one of the things that helps. Um, but even if you're doing the scroll wheel skating on, on PC is you need to know when to stop a lot of the time. Like if you're committing to that extra jump or that extra little skate to get closer, there's a very good chance you don't have your shotgun out and ready in time, depending on, you know, what the handling is on the shotgun, things like that. And so I think there's just a balance of saying, you know, when do I got to go fast? When do I got to push them? And when do I actually have to be ready for the engagement? And that goes for everything. A hunter, a a warlock. If you're, you know, jumping in as a hunter, uh, do you do that triple jump, that third jump? Or do you get that shotgun ready and aimed at him? You know what I mean? Is, is, Is you have to understand your distances. And when you're coming around that corner, you better be ready for a fight and, uh, and, and, you know, not adjusting as you're around the corner kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. I bet a lot of that comes from, I mean, you, all the games you've played of rumble. I mean, rumble, if your timing is off, you're either not getting enough points or you're showing up late and just getting cleaned up or something like that. So I bet that translates pretty well. Yeah. And I, like I self admittedly, well, part, partially because I don't care about stats, you know, I just care about getting the game over with kind of thing. I am way too aggressive. Like when people watch me, I I literally say it. I say, do not do what I'm doing. I'm playing (laughs) really dumb. And I come out on top because my, you know, gun skill is better than a handful of people, but I am playing like an idiot because I just go way too aggressive. And um, if I really want to win and I play comp, I usually slow things down quite a bit because diving into the enemy team uh, it can work. There's times to be really, really aggressive, but there's also some times to really just kind of hold things down and, and play smart because there's a good chance that you shock in that first guy. And then there's two other people, you know, coming out of their spawn or, or, you know, backing him up. And so it's kind of a one for one trade and maybe you lose map control because of it and things like that. So you just got to play smart. Have you played any uh, much rumble since forsaken dropped? No, no, not really. Um, yeah, I played a bit. Uh, I definitely I win more games because it's not as heavy reliant. Um, it's still very, very heavy reliant. Unfortunately, like if you can get it and hold things down right. with the Thunderlord, you, you win the game. Especially because it's only twenty <laughs> points. Like if you can get seven kills with the Thunderlord, devour Voidwalker. Like that's that's what thirty yeah, percent of the game, thirty three percent of the game, right? Um, <laughs> then you just use the. Uh... Nova Warp exactly, for the other. Exactly. And then use your Nova Warp for the rest. <laughs> 13 kills. <laughs> so it's, uh, it doesn't feel as much like Destiny 1 Rumble. I also, um, I, I don't know what it is. If it's the maps, if it's, I don't know. I In Destiny 1, I felt like I had a lot of 1v1 engagements and you still get cleaned up. But the way I played, you know, I'd 1v1 someone, I could set up, I'd get ready for the next guy. But in this one, I don't know why, but I feel like I get third partied a lot, like a ton. Someone comes in and cleans them up or cleans me up. And I don't know if it's a recovery issue, like how fast you get your HP back or or what it is. But for whatever reason, Rumble just doesn't feel the same to me. I don't feel like the Rumble Mm -hmm. King. I don't feel like I could play it for five hours in a row. Um, It just doesn't have the magic that it used to. Because that is my favorite game. Rumble is is where I like to play. I like to play solo. And it's... um, it's never grabbed my attention in Destiny 2 like it did in Destiny 1. I think I, I think I would agree with that. I mean, you know, it's still Rumble. It, it's still fun, but it yeah, it definitely doesn't feel like like quite the same thing as it was. I'm not going to be happy until they have 10 people in every Rumble match. <laughs> At least 10 people in every <laughs> At the start, match. didn't they have eight I, or I something? Like, and then they I love it. V8. Was I love was V8. That what it was? Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, it was eight. It was intense. <laughs> I did like it. I did like it. 
Uh, all right. Well, we've sort of been making the rounds, and where better to uh, end up than talking about subclasses? Um, so I think what I'd like to do for this, um, let me let me let me let me do this. Let me throw out um, let me throw out one of the classes, and you tell me uh, tell me what you'd be using there. So what subclasses are really going to stand out? What exotics are you going to be gravitating towards? Sure. And uh, you know, assuming we're playing Crucible, what are going to be a uh, we're going to be those weapons that you might pair with that class. Um, and I'm curious to start off with warlocks. So do you want me to do each element? Or yeah, just sure, like, sure. Yeah, let's, uh, let's. Okay. So yeah, uh, void, let's make the rounds. Let's, yeah. Void is Nova warp hands down. I think like the Nova bomb, it does not have a place right now. It just, it yeah. doesn't bring enough to the table. Uh, the hitbox on it, things like that. So I'd say Nova warp. Um, you can kind of play it two different ways. If you want to play a better neutral game, I would recommend using like burst glide, like a regular jump. If you want to be hyper aggressive and get like crazy kill streaks with your actual super, you can do blink and then you're really, really fast. Um, but it's only fractionally faster, so it's it's not too big of a deal. But I would go with the Nova Warp. Well, I was going to say, yeah, what, what exotic are you going to pair that up with? Because there's some, you know, like I've, I've found after trying a lot of stuff that I basically stick with transversive steps. But, you know, you can you can do the Nezerak, try and get sort of that, uh, those ability recharge. I mean, what are you going to be using there? Um, I agree with those boots. Those boots are, are, are really good. I, I didn't realize how good they were. I think my first review of it, I was like, oh, transversive steps are back and they still suck. The reloading, <laughs> once you get used to reloading it with sprinting oh, yeah. and, and things like that. And just the slide distance, great exotic. So I think that's good on pretty much every class. Um, the other one that's that kind of stands out is Controverse Hold. I think it's called Controverse. Mm, it's like the yep. arm piece. Yep. When you charge up your yep. grenade, it makes you tanky. And I think you can actually tank a chaperone shot. And so uh, if someone's pushing you around a corner, you can just literally tank that first shot, get the guaranteed grenade, and make some plays with that. All right. Well, let's keep making the rounds. Uh, let's say you hop over to Dawnblade. What are you rocking? I think I'm going Dawnblade. I'm going Top Tree. Interesting. So you're not uh you're not dependent on that Phoenix dive. Oh no, I never use that. I I just can't do it. And like, I know that the little air dash is cool, but I think just the super performs better with the Top Tree. Like they're kind of heat seek hmm. more, and you get super as you kill them. Isn't that how it works? Um. So <laughs> I'd say that's I go for more destruction with that than anything. But honestly, if I'm going for like AOE multiple kills. I'd probably do Nova Warp or uh, the Stormcaller. I don't like Dawnblade. I feel like there's there's a lot of room for error with Dawnblade. And the other ones are kind of just point, click, and murder. And recently, I've fallen in love with um, the Stormcaller, Top Tree, with the... Mm. Um, or no, sorry. I think it's Bottom Tree. Wh whichever one has Landfall. Landfall. I get uh, That's Bottom Tree. I, yeah, that is Bottom Yeah, okay. So I get really aggressive with that, but I have Crown of Tempests on. It feels like I have such a long super and I have so many grenades all game. And I think that's my favorite class to play right now is actually bottom tree storm color. Interesting. Yeah. So, so you, you, you think the crown of tempest is worth it over just, you know, sticking with Ophidian or sticking with transversive steps. Well, with the new update, they really buffed it because melees hit harder and grenades hit harder. And so you're actually going to get those kills more often. And so you're going to generate more cooldowns than you would in kind of vanilla destiny. And so before, I, yeah, I would go with the other ones. But now that I've started playing it within this one, I, I always get kills with my arc bolt grenades um, and, and, and like my melee ability. So it's it's definitely been a shift for me, um, especially if I'm shotgunning. You know, I, I shotgun them from really far away and then I get that melee kill and I start getting those cooldowns back. So it's been really good. There was one game. Um, I got two Reapers in one game because of that super. So it's really really solid uh it's consistent i love it um if we're jumping on to titans let's get let's jump on to titans let's this one seriously it messes me up because there's so many decisions for me <laughs> <laughs> um for the sunbreaker like the solar titan i do not like burning mall uh true vanguard loves it i can't get behind it i think there's too much um just there's just too many things that I feel like, oh, I could have got that kill if I had the regular throwing hammer. Like, oh, you know, those guys were grouped up. They would have been dead. Instead, they dispersed because I'm a melee. Mm. Um, so 
I would definitely go with the uh, the top tree for that one. That's the way the way I played is top tree, and uh, you get a little bit more AOE explosions for the uh, the Arc Titan. That one is is really dependent on what style you like. I like to use. I saw you top playing that tree. last night in yeah. comp, actually. Yeah, that's I, and so and I, I just is top tree. Yeah, I don't see it anymore. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, I like the panic of top tree. I like the double grenades for zoning. Um, the shoulder charge is always, you know, beautiful, <laughs> and you can use that shoulder charge if you're using it as your main, uh, you know, main way to attack people. You're gonna die to shotguns a lot. You're gonna not do much with it. It's not good to use as your main way of killing people. But when you're outnumbered in a situation and they're forcing you into certain hallways, there are a lot of situations where I come out alive because I was able to shoulder charge someone. So I more use it as an evasive thing than anything else. But for fun factor, that middle tree is like 10 times better. <laughs> it's so, it's so. Well, it, 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 based off of sort of what you've been talking about so far, it that top tree does make a lot of sense. I mean, if your responsibility is going to be controlling that power ammo for the comp game then anything that kind of gives you a bit more zone control seems like seems like a good fit right yeah 100 percent. and that's that's the way i play is i play for the team kind of thing i i i play to hopefully help my teammates do better like i'm i'm really sacrificial i'll, I'll do whatever it takes like if i notice that we got a couple of kills and heavy isn't quite up i'll dive into their team like near their spawn just to stop them from getting map control and like get towards the middle of the zone. So we can get uh, heavy down the road kind of thing. So I I do lots of crazy stuff like that. So grenades, any utility I can bring to the table. I'm, I'm a happy camper. Uh, when you're, when you're on your Titan, what, uh, what exotic are you going to be using? I use insurmountable skull fort because I, I do shoulder charge quite a bit, but I think synthesis, synthesis are really safe bet. Um, I don't know why, but I think unless you have Ursa Furiosa or um, <laughs> One-Eyed Mask, I, I, I don't know why I say this, but I feel like Titan exotics all kind of feel average to me. Like there's obviously some that do good things, but I, I'm not in love with any of them other than the ones that I don't have because they're just, they're so strong. <laughs> but, you know, I could name, I could name multiple Hunter exotics that I'd use or multiple Hunter or Warlock exotics that I'd use, but the Titan ones... Other than maybe Syntheseps and there's like Doomfang pauldrons, they just they just don't really stand out for me, unfortunately. Fair enough. All right, well, let's round it out and head over to Hunter. Uh, are you going to be using anything other than Blade Barrage? Um, no. <laughs> it, it, I, I love everything about Blade Barrage. It's fun to use on people. You make them cry. They send you hate mail. You can shut down supers. Um... <laughs> I also am a a reactive super user. I don't like to roam with supers that much. I like to use it uh, in a situation where I'm outnumbered and I can make a big play with it. Um, Because I just use my my shotgun, my grenades, and my my primary a lot of the time. And so people yell at me on stream, why are you using your super? And I know I could have or I should have, but I just, I don't know. I like to use it for the big moments that win the game kind of thing. And so I'll hold on to it for a really long time. And I feel like Blade Barrage does that. Oh, God, they use two supers in this round. Well, now I'm going to take them out with the Blade Barrage. So I, I definitely will sacrifice kill potential with something like the Golden Gun. Um, you know, because six shooter, I mean, that you can get six kills with that. Blade Barrage, unless they're really grouped, you're not going to get six kills. So, um, yeah, Blade Barrage yep. is, is kind of my, my forte. I like the Arc Strider, but... I just never fell in love with it. Hit registration on it is much better than it used to be, but uh, I don't know. I, I don't really dabble in the arc strider okay. that much. And then the bow is just terrible. Like I don't even get that bow near me. <laughs> poor that poor bow. <laughs> but they, they just buffed the um the spectral spectral blades. blades so <laughs> I haven't dabbled with it. I don't know. Have you guys? Is it any good now? Have you guys used it? I think that. That change is coming up with... Oh, they the, haven't done it yet. The new season. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Well, I've seen some plays with like the... I think it's Gwizine or Gwizine Vest or something like that. Yes. Mm-hmm. You can keep that thing going for like 30 seconds. So if they buff it and they've got that, like, I don't know, Spectral Blades could be meta next patch. Sure. I, I truly have nice seen some uh, absurd 
absurd clips with, uh, you know, chaperone and the invis on crit shot and stuff like that. And, you know, like you, you mentioned that Drewski clip. I mean, he was invisible for a minute straight because of that precision kill to, to invis. So I feel like it's got a neutral game that people are still figuring out. And once they buff the super, we could see a lot more of that. I I think it's going to be good. Yeah. Like that guy's playing in, in 30, 19, like that guy's, so far ahead of the curve with that, like in his yeah. upkeep, ninety eight percent. He's using, it's, yeah, you know, it's just crazy. You mentioned there was a variety of hunter exotics that you'd use. What stands out to you? I like I like the Stompies. Um, Classic. It, it's just they're always good. Um, I like the shards of Galanor for my blade barrage because you get your super like half of it back if you get a bunch of kills. Um, yeah. Even knucklehead radar, like the radar system, there's there's bigger delays uh, in Destiny 2 when you aim down sights. So I, I kind of like knucklehead radar here and there. Foe tracers better than people would think, just for the vis- like the um, visibility or whatever. Mm-hmm. Big fan of those ones. Uh, the frosties are also pretty good if you if you like to use grenades a whole bunch. But my go to, my baby boo boo, even though I don't use arc stride that much, is lucky raspberry. That thing is gross. Ooh. I don't know if anyone uses that, <laughs> but you can huck a grenade into people. And like, it was more back at the start because the cooldowns were so long and there's no way to really buff that. But getting your grenade back was like, holy shit, I just saved a minute and a half, you know? Yeah. And like you chain it in trials like two, three times. It was the ultimate exotic for me in trials because they'd group up, I'd throw a grenade, and i just keep spamming them. And the amount of times I wiped teams with just arc bolt grenades, that was like the only way I got kills. So <laughs> I, I love Lucky Raspberry. Oh, there you go. Well, I'm tashed. I really am going to take away a decent amount from this this interview especially that uh it really hits home with me like oh i'm going to sacrifice myself for my teammates every once in a while i think about it and it like it always ends up being a great place so that's something i'm definitely going to take away from this yeah train we should play comp later and you can uh, sacrifice yourself <laughs> yeah 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 what no, are your no. what are your comp points at i'm at like around the 3000 mark like let's go let's get it Bones is close. Oh no, close is a uh, relative, but uh, I'm I'm scared. I just don't have the time left in the season. But I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Yeah, Swain and I are both started on this one late, so we're we're dancing right around uh, getting our Luna's Howl. Not quite, almost there. Well, let's jump. You guys on got him. it like tonight or tomorrow. Yeah, I got I got all night. So if you guys want to jump on, I'm down. All right. Well, this guy. Well, there you go. Yeah. Over glories and two. Right, well, yeah. We're going to have to end this episode. M- so M Tash can carry us the rest of the way to. Yeah. I actually here. kind of suck uh, now. So <laughs> it's washed. Oh, what you're saying is you want me to sacrifice. Dude, oh. You know what? There, <laughs> there was a post on, on Crucible Playbook today. It was like, who are good people to watch on PC? And someone's like, well, I would say M Tash, but not anymore. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> what happened that guy that well, sounds like the playbook to hey me. my feelings <laughs> but if people want to watch your mediocre gameplay where can <laughs> they find you mtash i am on youtube mtashed uh, i'm also on twitch uh but i have been focusing a lot on youtube lately uh, almost all my effort is on youtube things are going really it's good thumbnails there. though Looking thumbnails good. <laughs> though. actually i just started a, a top 10 series so if you guys have any clips, you can send on uh, send in your clips to uh, mtashclips at gmail.com. So actually, quickly, before we go, uh, did you guys <laughs> see that Fighting Lion video on Reddit the other day? It was like saying how good Fighting Lion is. It was really heavily edited. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know the one you're talking you about. Yeah. So anyways, I commented on that and I was like, so uh, can I hire, can I hire you to be my editor? Kind of as a joke. And then I was like, no, actually, he's a really good editor. So I reached out to him <laughs> about doing this series. And I actually, I hired him to be my editor for the series. So we got kind there of a little go. partnership going. He gets the clips, puts them together. That's and, fantastic. Uh, you know, hopefully he can get a little bit of following because he makes some really funny videos and stuff. So yeah, that that was really good. And I think there's a sleeper simulant one. Let's like, it's still good in Gambit and it's uh, equally, equally funny. But yeah, that's right. some good editing. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And Tesh, thank you so much. Well, thanks for, for having me. This, joining this us is today. quick and beautiful. Good to have you back. Yeah. See you at the next tournament. 
let's let's go get Lunas Hell now. Like, <laughs> let's go, <laughs> guys. Go. The peace. <laughs> All right, folks, thank you for staying till the end of the episode. If you're the type of person <laughs> you crazy freak <laughs> to the end of an episode, uh, I, I, I can put together several motivations. Maybe you're a completionist. Maybe you're on a long drive and you need uh, every little bit of entertainment you can get. Maybe you're a weird freak. I don't know. <laughs> I have my podcast I listen to the end on, too. Actually, I, I generally listen all the way to the end, so... Uh, you're in good company over here. At, uh, Birds, are you a one-time speed guy? Uh, yeah, I can't. Be. I feel like can't do it either. I feel like I want to listen to. I'm not, you know, my sister. She listens to 200 podcasts a week. <laughs> she listens to them on 4x. She's just crossing them off her list. I got a. I got my my ones I listen to, and I like to. You know, I like to savor them. And, you know, I want to pay attention. I don't want things to rush by. You don't want this. Primo comedy to rush by and miss all the, the comedic timing of us <laughs> making mouth noises. Yeah, <laughs> this is good shit. I feel like w- one point five speed blade dancer sounds like more realistic because like my mouth can't speed. move as fast as the yeah. game creates the blade dancer sound. So, Fair. so crank it up for the, it. for the. For the- for the blade dancer noises and crank it right back. I personally listen to Crucible Radio on 0.5x. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like we're drunk yeah. the whole time. It sounds like Birds is more drunk the whole time. More sounds drunk like. than he usually is, yeah. I, uh, <sighs> recognize we're at the end of the show. Go check it out, crucibleradio.com. Twitter.com slash... Uh, you guys know. If you've Patreon. listened to this Com point, you know where to Crucible find Radio. us. We're so good at this podcast, we know when it's over. <laughs> Just uh, ends. 177. That was the cue, Swain. You're supposed to just let it end when he said ends. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Andrew, you, you cut it off right there. No, <laughs> <laughs> leave it. I've got things to say. <laughs> <sighs> and somehow we still know after Swain has said his things. That- like I said, we know when this podcast is over. What's up, everyone? Bones here. Do you like podcasts? Do you like chill conversation? Well, me and my co-host Swain and Birds put out a bonus podcast every month on Patreon. If you want to check it out and be a part of more awesome stuff, head over to patreon.com crucibleradio and join the squad. See you there.